What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today we're taking a look at the iPhone 14 Pro cinematic mode because it's got a few updates. It can now shoot in 4K and you're actually watching it right now. This is what it looks like on the iPhone 14 Pro. You can see the background blurring out behind me. It actually looks really good this year. And this is only like the second iteration of it because it only came out last year when it first launched, it was in beta. I made a video about it, but it's gotten a lot better now. The colors look better and obviously we can shoot in 4K. And we can also shoot in 24 frames per second, which is a little bit more cinematic. It's more what film is shot in, what movies are shot in, and you can tell that it looks really, really good. So one cool thing they added to iOS 16 is actually foreground blur. So I can put my hand up here and my face is still gonna be in focus. And before what it would do, it was kind of just picking out a subject that's in front and it would actually put the subject and everything else also in focus. So now this looks a little bit more realistic. My hands are out of focus. I'm looking down at the monitor. You can see it's got the box around my face there. And if I put my hand right in front of the camera, it will focus on my hand, but it looks so good and I'm, <laughs> I mean, obviously you can tell it's fake sometimes, but the key is to actually drop the aperture. So the fake aperture, I've got it set at F7.1 right now. And I think that's the sweet spot to leave it at F7.1. Um, it can go down to like F2, but it looks super fake and you don't really want to leave it there. So leaving it at like F7 looks pretty good. And it even looks good on the front facing camera. And I guess I'll switch over to that right now. All right, so this is the front facing camera. You can see it's a little bit wider on each side here compared to the regular back camera. And it's doing a really good job of tracking. <laughs> it looks good, it's nice and sharp. It's still 4K, 24 frames per second. I don't know, man, I feel like I could vlog with this and this could replace a lot of other vlog cameras. And you're listening to the audio with a mic up here, but the audio on the actual phone itself does look good. It just has a little bit of issues when there's wind and stuff. And just because I could, I set up next to the Sony a7R5 so you could see them side by side. The Sony a7R5 is a full frame mirrorless camera and clearly there's quite a bit of a difference here in color. That's because the Sony is just in a standard picture profile while the iPhone's using its cinematic mode colors. I do notice the cinematic mode colors look a little bit more muted, a little bit more desaturated, and I kind of like how it looks. Um, here I'm also showing the stabilization, how much better it is on the iPhone. There's really not much of a comparison there. So one cool thing about cinematic mode that I noticed versus just regular video on the iPhone 14 Pro is it kind of smooths out the image. It keeps it nice and sharp, but it's like it has a filter on it a little bit to make it look a little bit more filmic, I guess. It just kind of smooths it out. It makes it look less digital. And I actually think that I'd rather just shoot in this mode with the f-stop kind of cranked up a bit higher than regular video. What's also really nice is the stabilization. Obviously they added that action mode where you can have like ultra stabilization, but I feel like a stabilization on cinematic mode, which actually allows you to stay in 4K if you're shooting on the iPhone 14 Pro, looks really good. Obviously when you're shooting it, you're not really getting that digital stabilization and it looks kind of shaky, especially when you're shooting on the telephoto lens you kind of notice that the image looks a little shaky, but after you're done shooting, it processes it and it looks really, really smooth and looks really stable. The other cool thing about shooting cinematic mode is after you've actually shot the video, you can go edit and change your focus point afterwards, which is really cool. So you can go in and you can choose, you know, the focus point that you were on, but you could also select a different focus point afterwards and then save that into the file and then export the video. And that's really cool. And another awesome thing is that you can actually import the videos off the phone and bring them into Final Cut and also change your focus points afterwards because you might want to edit these videos in Final Cut instead of doing them on your phone. So obviously from all the footage I've shown, you can tell the cinematic mode is looking really, really good. And the stabilization is insane. The stabilization is what always gets me because when I'm looking at the back of the screen, it's a little bit shaky, but after it's stabilized, it looks like I'm on a gimbal or kind of like a steady cam. Wouldn't really call it a gimbal because it's not really horizontal. It does have a bit of a flow to it, which is pretty cool. And I feel like I could actually vlog with this. This is way more convenient than having like a Sony ZV-1 setting it up, making sure it's in focus and stuff, because this is always gonna pretty much keep you in focus. And if it missed, you could change the focus point afterwards in editing. And that's pretty cool. It's just way more convenient. The audio on it's really good. The stabilization on it's really good. And you could use the front facing camera, which can also do 4K, 24 frames per second in cinematic mode and give you a really nice image. Plus you can see yourself because you have the screen. But there are some things that kind of make this maybe not the best vlog camera. In low light, it's gonna look a lot mushier. It's not gonna look as sharp. And so you're gonna have some issues in low light, but in good lighting, it looks amazing. But yeah, there are some improvements that I think need to be made. And the first one would definitely be just the exposure. 
There is no way to lock exposure like you can in the regular camera. You can set your exposure compensation down to like negative two EV or something like that. But the issue is it doesn't stay locked true to that. You can bring it down to that, but the camera's still trying to auto adjust for that. So I noticed I was shooting in like a darker shadowy area. And when I panned up to her face, her face was actually overexposed and then brought it right back down to that negative two EV. And so it's not quite perfect. It would be nice if you could lock your exposure so it doesn't do that kind of thing, but it's kind of just auto exposing still. And then obviously things like subject isolation, like humans or other objects, it's going to be especially hard with hair because if the hair is flowing in the wind, it can't pick out each strand of hair and cut it out perfectly. But I did think that the phone was using LiDAR. It might still be using LiDAR, but it's, you know, maybe it just needs more AI prediction and stuff for the hair, but it's doing a decent job, but it could do better. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Just a quick one. I kind of wanted to go through some some cinematic mode with you guys because I think it's really good on this phone this year and I think it could be a main reason why you might want to upgrade to the 14 Pro over the other phones because the iPhone 13 Pro can only do 1080p and so the 4K does look a little bit better. But that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one.